For centuries, philosophers and scientists have wondered what makes humans special, and invariably they've focused on language. With language, we can make plans, communicate, and socialize like no other animal. Geneticists believe it's an ability hardwired into us. Somewhere in our DNA, there must be some language genes. It's just a matter of finding them. The search led scientists to the Kearney family in London. Half the members of this large family suffer from an unusual speech disorder. Where do you live, Laura? Um, I sure. best font. They are six. The Kearneys have a problem articulating words and make simple grammatical mistakes. It is clearly a genetic condition, something that's been passed down from one generation to the next. And in 2001, geneticists found the faulty gene. On chromosome 7 is a big complex gene known as FOXP2. In members of the Kearney family, it's not working properly, affecting their ability to speak. But the rest of us rely on it every time we communicate with others. Scientists believed the human version of FOXP2 emerged about 200,000 years ago, roughly the same time as modern humans, Homo sapiens, emerged in East Africa. Our ancestors would have had an advantage over the Neanderthals, who didn't have the same version of FOXP2 in their DNA. That at least was the theory. But when geneticists started analyzing the Neanderthal genome, they found this language gene, exactly the same version as in modern humans. This was quite surprising for us because most people have thought before that this is one of the key genes that differentiates modern humans and Neanderthals. So that actually means that the Neanderthals um, might have had language um, like we had. This is quite a turnaround for Neanderthal man. For so long, he was cast in the role of the dumb, grunting brute. Voila! Keep rolling! Now we discover he shared the language gene FOXP2 with us and arguably had the same linguistic abilities. But how could the same version of FOXP2 exist in the DNA of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens? The two species had evolved separately for at least half a million years. This gene shouldn't be in both of them. It should be in one or the other. So you have to wonder, did it get there by interbreeding? Was there an interaction between these populations that put that gene there, or that brought it from them into us? It's an intriguing possibility. A crucial gene for language may have come to us from breeding with Neanderthals. But why would Neanderthals have had anything useful to pass on to modern humans by way of language? For John Hawks, the clues were to be seen at the rodeo. When tackling any wild beast, whether for fun or food, it makes sense to work as a team, with someone in pole position and others trying to distract the animal and keep it under control. He believes Neanderthals would have collaborated in exactly the same way when hunting. Their spears were used for impaling animals. They weren't designed to be thrown. So Neanderthals had to get up very close to their prey and run the risk of serious injury. The only way to do this and stay safe was to work as a team, always communicating with each other. You could imagine that communication is something they were good at. You have to know exactly what everybody's going to do at all times. You have to know how they're going to react when the animal takes this wrong turn. 
they had to cooperate in a very tightly focused manner. All of those things promote the possibility of, of adaptations in the brain that would have been valuable in later populations. By contrast, modern humans came from the African savanna. They had aerodynamic spears that could be thrown with great accuracy. This meant that they could hunt at a distance, reducing their risk of injury. But it also meant they could be more solitary. They could hunt in pairs or on their own. They didn't have the same need to communicate with others. When we consider the hunting methods of modern humans, they were a little more independent. They could sort of make a living a little bit more for themselves. Whereas Neanderthals were forced to cooperate. They had to work together to get these large animals down with the technology they had available. According to this way of thinking, language, that most human of abilities, may really be a legacy we inherited from the Neanderthals. And there may be more. Two other genes involved in brain development have recently been discovered in modern DNA. Some scientists think that these genes show signs of having a Neanderthal origin. The modern humans who first arrived in Europe 40,000 years ago were resourceful and intelligent, capable beings. But they may not have had the same range of mental abilities we have today. Only by mixing with ancient humans like the Neanderthals would they have fine-tuned their brains and become truly modern. When we think of modern humans leaving Africa, I imagine that when this group was expanding, they come into contact with other human populations, they're going to pick up anything that makes you smarter or gives you some cognitive advantage. Many anthropologists don't accept this argument. They believe the DNA findings are still too new and incomplete to prove the case for interbreeding. I would certainly not deny that some hanky-panky might well have uh, gone on. Uh, what obviously did not happen was any major uh, biologically significant exchange of genes. There may not be one single answer. So interbreeding may have been um, more common in some areas of Europe than in others. The fact that we see so little of it in the genetic evidence so far indicates that it was quite rare. When people talk about interbreeding, they say, well, if they interbred, it wasn't very much. But even a very small amount gives the opportunity for these advantageous things to enter the population. So this tiny amount of interbreeding, if it was small, is enough to have a hugely important effect on the population later in time. This is one of the great debates of human evolution. Are we a pedigree series with a unique set of genes and characteristics, or really a population of mongrels, a genetic alphabet soup? The only way to know for sure is to keep analyzing the Neanderthal genome, comparing it to ours, looking for overlap. The answers must be there, somewhere in the DNA.